I'm visiting the baking capitals of the world, uncovering the tastes, traditions, and the recipes Look at that. of the world's best baking cities. I love coming into bakeries. From the historic streets of Palermo to the multicultural city of San Francisco. Mm, I love it. Welcome to City Bakes. City Bakes has taken me on a journey of discovery all around the world, but this show is special. I'm taking you back to somewhere I love. Today, I'm in Cyprus, where I lived and worked for six years. In 1996, I left my job at the Dorchester Hotel in London, throwing caution to the wind to make a new life in the sun. It'd be nice to catch up with a few old friends if they're around. For the first time in over a decade, I'm going back to the kitchens I once spent hundreds of hours in. It's weird wearing whites and being in the Annabelle kitchen. And I'll share with you the Cyprus that I know and the baking secrets that make this place so special to me. From the thinnest phyllo you've ever seen... <laughs> That's incredible. Look how thin that is. ..to a family who have been baking the same bread recipe for decades. That is very, very good. <laughs> And to finish my visit, I bake the loaf I'm remembered for and share it with friends. I hope you enjoy, guys. Tuck in. Welcome to my second home. Welcome to City Bakes in Cyprus. Cyprus holds many memories for me. I used to work in the tourist town of Paphos on the coast, and I even got married here in the south of the island. As a baker, I can't believe I got a chance to actually work here. When I started off in the Wirral learning how to bake when I was 17, I didn't think it'd take me to a place like this. My time in Paphos was an experience that changed my life. For me, when I came here when I was 28, it was a real cultural shock for me, and I'd never really travelled much away from the Wirral at all, and it's very much a home bird. And actually, I took it into my heart. Paphos was, was running through my veins. I loved it. And whilst I was here, I couldn't get enough of the wonderful tastes that are unique to this island. The thing is about Cyprus and its baking, it's all about these few key flavours that are in pretty much everything. Sesame seed is on and in a lot of things, whether it's in the form of tahini paste or sesame seed. This thing looks a bit like a croissant, but actually when you break it open, see the olives inside? Olives are key. Now, dactyla. It's basically like a phyllo pastry, drowned in a syrup. So many of the Cypriot pastries are flavoured with a sweet syrup. But there is one flavour in this box which really screams Cypriot and indeed Greek baking. That is mastika. It's like a gum. You have to grind that down and it releases its smell. I suppose think extreme pine meets cumin meets aniseed. It just reminds me of living in Cyprus. Yeah, it's like coming home. And home for me was the Annabelle, a five-star seafront hotel where I landed the job as head baker. It'd be nice to catch up with a few old friends if they're around. The hotel is still owned by siblings Thanos, Natasha and Anna. You're right. Nice you. These guys basically run everything. Whilst the hotel guests soaked up the sunshine, I spent most of my time downstairs. It's bad, it takes me back. It's really quite weird. And the girl in the middle there, Ligia, she was our chief bridesmaid. Hello, Ligia. Hi, how are you? How are you doing, dear? I love being back here, catching up with my friends. It's a very special place to me, and the people are just great. I'll be ending my trip here, as Anna and her family have organised a special reunion dinner and asked me to bake one of my classic breads they remember and love. Cheers. 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 But before that, I have a couple of days to show you why I love this island so much. And first up on my tour is the capital, Nicosia, where I think you get a taste of the real Cyprus. Nicosia is where the Cypriots live. 
not really a tourist destination. This is where you're going to find local cuisine and local people. Nicosia is 90 miles from Paphos and the only major settlement that's not on the coast. To me, this city feels a little bit like a time capsule. Modern life exists side by side with shops and cafes that haven't changed in decades. And my first stop is the Hurricane Bakery, which has been making traditional pastries for over 70 years. Now this place is famous for its cheese pies, pasties. It says here in the window, they are the best cheese pies in the world. I'll be the judge of that, shall I? These pies are so popular, Mikos opens up at 6 a.m. to serve his loyal customers. How long has this place been here? The shop here is from 1942. Wow. I use uh, seven different cheeses. Seven. OK, seven. let me try and get this. Cheddar. Cheddar, Eta, Feta, Halloumi. Feta, Halloumi, Anari. Kefalotiri, Little Anari. Little Anari. Yes. So that'll be six. And then one so more. Graviera. We graviera. call it Graviera. You have to try it. He seems pretty proud of his cheese pies. Thank you. That's good. You've got all the texture of the cheese. is all melted gorgeously with the puff pastry that really is flaking. You always tell a good pastry because it's got butter on your fingers. I love Mikos. He takes real pride in his traditional recipes, and this place has stood the test of time, a story I've seen repeated all over the island. To help explain a bit more about how the food culture has evolved, I'm meeting up with my friend, Athena Lazoides. She's a fellow foodie who was born in Nicosia and now has her own cooking show on Cypria TV. She also writes about the island's complicated culinary history. Cyprus is an island that's always been captured by some foreign power. Yeah. <laughs> We've been ruled by the uh, Phoenicians, the Persians, Egyptians. Um, we've had uh, the French, the Italians, the Turkish, and the British, of course. Yeah. So all these influences come together to um, form what is today our traditional baking. But I think the key thing is you use ingredients indigenous to Cyprus, and exactly. that makes it your own. Unique, exactly. Athena wants to take me to one of her favourite bakeries, a backstreet shop with no fancy trimmings. I've been coming here since I was a little child, and this is my favourite bakery. This little bakery has been around for 80 years. Mrs. Cristalla here has been running it for 40 years. Yeah. It makes very special things, like these little pretzels here, yeah. which are lovely, yeah. and this lovely wine and carob cookies. Can we try? Yeah, yes. Okay. So, I mean, they're made by hand. <laughs> you can taste the wine in it. It's not alcoholic, that's been burnt off. So what you're left with is the flavour. Imagine the red wine going in there would have added to the colour as would the carob syrup as well, which is, again, all over Cyprus. Normally, when you come into a bakery, you expect to see lots and lots of cabinets with lots and lots of baked goods. Actually, what, two, three products that's here, right. and that's it? Yes, that's it. That's what they make, and they bake fresh every day. I love the fact that this little bakery, selling just three traditional bakes, is still going strong. To dig around and find a little pearl of a bakery like that is pure magic. It's nearly 20 years since I've been to Nicosia, and though so much is familiar, things have moved on. Like many European cities, a new generation is bringing a buzz, and I can see a wonderful blend of old and new. But to really understand the city's evolution, you need to delve a bit deeper into the struggles of the past century. There is one reason that makes Nicosia a very unique place. Since the fall of the Berlin Wall, Nicosia became the only divided capital in the world. Before the 1970s, Cyprus was a mix of Turkish and Greek. But in 1974, the Turkish army invaded the north of the island, which they still occupy today. Since the war, this is where the line was drawn, and it cut the city in half. So we have Nicosia here, and this line here cuts right through the middle of the city. Nearly half the population was displaced, and both sides lost homes and businesses as Greeks were forced south and the Turks moved north. Last time I was here, which is about 20 odd years ago, there was a wall, sandbags, and you could look over it, barbed wire, and you look over to the north. But now it's gone. You can walk through, not a problem. 
Since 2003, checkpoints have been opened, but many Cypriots still refuse to cross. But talks are slowly moving things on, and hopefully we'll see real progress in healing the capital very soon. Next, I'm visiting a family who, despite all these difficult politics, have grown their traditional simple bakery into something rather impressive. Galopesas has basically been run by a family for many, many years. Just like Nicosia, it's a true mix of the old and new. He's just down here on the rice. Come in here, you're gonna love this. Look how open it is, how spacious it is, how modern it looks, but then, what goes against that is this. Come here, look at this. Those are very traditional Cypriot biscuits, snacks. But then you look over there to the right, you've got all your bombs, your modern-day patisserie. Owner Michalis has kindly agreed to show me his little empire. Hi, Michalis, you OK? Hello, yeah. I'd shake your hat. Oh, you're gone. You're yeah. covered in uh, chocolate at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I tried to do some cakes. Michalis trained in France as a patissier then returned and expanded his family business into a thoroughly modern bakery. Here are, the, are my family, my mom, Hello. the girls. They've been working Hello. for us Hello. for almost 20 years. In my experience of families, I've often found it's the women who rule the roost. And McAllister's mum is certainly boss here, under the watchful eye of Yaya. So this is my grandmother. Calimera. Calimera, that's Carlos origin. Yeah. You okay? Okay. You've been busy. Yeah. <sighs> now she only sings. Life is full of glitches, me trau Don't you love her? McAllister's grandmother isn't just singing for me. This is how she spends her time. She starts singing when she was 75. Really? After he finished the time from baking, he starts singing. When you finish baking, you think, what am I going to do now? So I think, what am I going to do now? I'm going to start singing. McAllis and his mother both bake their own recipes for the shop, a winning formula that satisfies traditional and modern tastes. This classic tahini pitas, for example, is made by mum. When you break into this, it's a bit like pan You know, so you've got pan you and you're folded around the pastry. Cinnamon, tahini, pastry. Strong cinnamon but it's the style of pastry, very traditional in Cyprus. And alongside this, Michalis also serves his own variation of tahini pitas, which he wants to show me. I wonder which one tastes better, his or his mum's? So it's the old style, but yeah. then slightly new textures. Yeah. First, we mix the filling of sugar, cinnamon and tahini. Tahini flavour is like, I suppose you get some sesame seeds and a nut brittle and blitz that down. So the addition of sugar makes it a little bit sweeter. Cinnamon gives it a little bit of an edge as well. You end up with that. It's OK. It's OK. You have to ask my mum now because okay. Okay. she knows. With a thumbs up from the boss, the mixture is spread over the thin phyllo pastry. Cigar, cigar? Yes, slowly, slowly. Now, another secret. I'm looking for something crunchy. Yeah. Now I want to put sugar and cinnamon on top of this. On top of and the sugar and cinnamon. McAllister's twist is to add a crunchy layer of extra sugar and cinnamon. Next, the long, thin dough is carefully rolled, cut and placed in a tin. Just laying out sausages, a bit like baklava, when you put it all in a tray. Now it's ready for the oven. It's ready for the oven. After an hour in the oven, the tahini pitas are crisp and golden and ready to be doused in syrup. Beautiful. Strong colour as well, isn't it? When you're putting syrup in a cake, in a bread or anything like this, you have to put it in when it's warm because it soaks in. When it solidifies, it creates a skin and you can't get through. It's a lot of syrup. Now, the killer question is, you make the old one and the new one, which one sells best? Both are selling Oh, quite leave weird. it out. Yeah. One of these will sell better. Is it yours or your mother's? Yeah, of course, my mum. They can't be exactly the same. They are your mother's. <laughs> because this is, is more sweeter. There you have it. Right there is modern Cyprus. Old with new. Same flavours, slightly different texture, but it works. 
That's delicious. Bravo. Bravo, thank you. Next, I show you how to bake my version of a Cypriot classic. I think that's a nice looking cake. And I discover phyllo pastry being made in an extraordinary way. I love watching an artist at work doing this sort of thing. I'm taking you back to the island I once called home, Cyprus. Right there is modern Cyprus. I lived here for six years in the 90s, and I'm loving rediscovering the island's flavors. I've got all the texture, the cheese is all melted gorgeously. And I do rather like the laid back attitude here in the capital, Nicosia. Now, what we've got here is a very classic Cypriot scene. You have men sitting down playing backgammon. Most of the men that sit down here normally are 50 plus, so I just about squeeze into that bracket where I can sit down, join in with my white beard. I could probably blend in quite well. One thing Cypriots love is a biscuit with their coffee. I've ordered a Metrios Classic. You see it all over Cyprus. Thick, strong, and a quiet taste. It's not like an espresso. Much, much stronger than that. Now, obviously, I've got my Greek coffee, but I've also got a selection of biscuits here as well. Now, this one we've seen before, a bit like a pretzel, but again, coated in sesame seed. You see sesame seed everywhere in Cypriot cooking. That's quite nice, that. That's quite Moorish. I'd have that with cheese, not necessarily a coffee. Now, these things... My goodness, I've still got my own teeth. I might dunk these, actually. See, when I grew up, I had digestive, chocolate digestive, hobnobs, which are the marines of the dunking world. These things, they're more like SAS. I mean, these things, you can probably dunk them, sit in there all day for 24 hours, lift them out, and they'll still be holding their own. And taste that sweetness on the outside. That's actually very nice. If I'm honest, the Cypriot's love of dry biscuits was always a little bit of a mystery to me. I've always been more of a cake fan myself. Luckily, there's a great little cake shop just round the corner. Now, we know there's a strong Greek influence involved with all Cypriot baking, but if we're going to look for the Greek influence, this is Mr. Greek, and Philo is his middle name. Theo trained in mainland Greece before opening his bakery here right where the city is divided. He's producing authentic Greek cakes, which the locals can't get enough of. Hello, Theo. Hello, Paul. Now, I've heard Theo makes his pastry like no one else on the island, and he's renowned for his signature phyllo pie. We put a little bit of powdered sugar. Yeah. And, of course, cinnamon. So what is in this then? What's, the, what's in the... Inside is uh, grease, milk, sugar, and a little bit uh, vanilla. That is delicious. With the cream inside, with the pastry, again, that hint of cinnamon. Right, I've got to see how you make this phyllo okay. then. Come on then. Let's go. That's delicious. Theo has offered to show me his unique phyllo stretching technique, and it's something I've never seen before. This is the, the pastry. Now, what's in this? Just milk, water, uh, salt, flour, and a little bit of butter. What do you see here? It's olive oil. So this is in olive it's oil? olive, yes. That's interesting. That's different, because so, I would use clarified butter, but that is slightly different. Theo's technique is impressive. This one piece will make 52 layers. Wow. How much of a stretch you're getting on that is incredible. Who taught you how to do this? Uh, I teach for my family, my grandfather, and my father, my father to me. And I hope I make the same with my son. Does he travel traveled as your son? Uh, my son is two and a half. Yeah, oh, he's a bit young, really. I have it? to wait. <laughs> I am astounded. This dough work is extraordinary. How do you know when it's thin enough? You can see your finger. That's incredible, Al. Look how thin that is. I love watching an artist at work doing this sort of thing. It's a thing of beauty. It's like art. When you see that getting thrown around, he's taking decades to learn how to do it properly. And before you ask, no, I'm not going to give it a go. And end up wearing it like a hat. Now for the delicious filling. Theo mixes milk, sugar, oil, corn flour, eggs and vanilla essence to make a custard. 
while Theo was in there finishing off, he said, come and look around the back. This is fascinating down here. Theo's bakery backs onto the actual divide that splits the city in two. Now this is the buffer zone. The buffer zone is a deserted area running through the city. Whole streets were cleared and sealed off to create a physical space between the fighting Turks and Greeks. This place hasn't been touched for 40 plus years. It's just been derelict. These were people's businesses down there. Turkish Cypriots were in there, Greek Cypriots were in there. It's just, it's crazy. Back inside, Theo is dividing the phyllo into sections. So this is the custard? Yes. He then folds it into 52 super thin layers. That is incredible. So that whole piece that you stretched out yes. on the whole table just makes and one. We make uh, just only six portions. Then it's baked for 45 minutes. The production of the phyllo pastry, whereas most people nowadays would just go out and buy the stuff, to actually produce it and have that skill, which has taken over 35 years for him to master, is phenomenal. And the flavour that he attains in those cakes and the pie specifically with that phyllo is unbelievable. There you have it. It's as simple as that. <laughs> yeah, right. My friend Athena has invited me round to her house for tea and cake. Nice pad. She's baking me something called shamali cake. Hey, Paul. Hello, Athena. How are I've you? I've been waiting nice to for see you. you. Shamali is a moist syrup cake made with semolina and yogurt, and Athena's just taken one out the oven. Oh, it's warm still. Yeah, it's still warm, yeah. Has this been passed down to you, this recipe? This recipe, yes. I mean, my, my grandmother obviously used to make it. Do you think it's important to keep these recipes alive? Of course. These recipes are just so dear to me. It's all our history and all our influence and all our culture that comes out in our uh, sweets and baking. I totally agree. So, are you ready for some shamali? Yes, please. Right. Mm. I get the syrup that you put on the top, it's mm -hmm. very sweet. Mm -hmm. And it is quite coarse as well. Because of the semolina in there, it opens the structure up and makes it melt in your mouth. It doesn't bind together like, um, like a traditional cake would. Mm. That's really nice. Well, I'm glad you like it. Now, I want to do my version. <laughs> Don't have a go at it and say, no, that's rubbish. I will try my best. I'm very curious to see how you can uh, work around the chamelie cake. <laughs> Inspired by Athena's grandmother's recipe, I want to show you how to make a version with slightly different flavours. This is so simple and great to bake with the kids. Now, to start with, I'm going to get my semolina together. And what I'm going to add is some yoghurt, and this is Greek yoghurt. But I'm going to slacken this down a little bit. I like to use yoghurt because I think it just gives it that wonderful, moist, Texture. Yeah, you are absolutely right. Then in goes castor sugar and vegetable oil. It may look like it's curdled, but don't panic. Next, add baking powder for that essential rise. Two eggs I'm going to crack straight in as well. One, two, and then some mastika. The flavour of mastika is a hint of pine, aniseed and cumin. And my twist is to add orange, which grows everywhere in Cyprus. And I'm actually going to put a bit of coarse in there. I like to see it as well. Mm. You're looking for that drop consistency. It does drop off the spoon. Mm. Oh, you're using it around? Yes. I, I wouldn't have done that because it's usually in either square or rectangular. So that'll be interesting to see. And now for the syrup. Add the juice of an orange to sugar and water. Bring it up to the boil and simmer it down. Just to reduce that water down, you will end up with a lovely syrup to go on top of the cake. Right, I have my syrup, I have my cake, now we need an oven. Let's go. The shamali cake takes around 40 minutes to bake. OK, here's my cake. Right. So what I'm going to do is cut this mm. into portions. I've cut a few cakes in my time, <laughs> I'll tell you. Now for my orange-infused syrup. Yeah. Oh, the orange smells nice. It should mm. do. 
Now that just drives down, it's gonna soak all the semolina which is gonna be sitting inside that cake. And then, pistachios again, these are very Cypriot all over the top. I think that's a nice looking cake. Mm. I'm gonna see if I can release, oh, I think I've got it. You've got it, wonderful. There you go. Thank you. Now, wow. you can be as honest as you like. Mm. Remember, I'm in competition with Athena's grandmother's recipe here. It's a twist. It's a twist. It's a twist on, on what you would You're not expect. convincing me there. <laughs> no, it's lovely. It's lovely. I like the idea of making it into a round cake and cutting it into wedges. Yeah, I'm definitely a winner. Much. Definitely a winner. Now we've made the cake, mm -hmm. we need one more thing with it. What's that? Do you have any tea? Tea? Yeah, I might do, actually. Okay. <laughs> yes. Let's go back. Yes, go. I think a cup of tea with a cake. You can't Ooh. go wrong. <laughs> Coming up. I'm going to show you one of my favorite breads that's been made in the same small village for decades. This is bread making in its purest form. And I rediscover my much loved Cypriot late night snack. The smell is killing me. I'm back in Cyprus, the place I consider my second home. That's delicious. And I want to show you the island that I love and the places the tourists don't see. This is fascinating down here. Next, I'm heading west out of the capital Nicosia to a traditional roadside shop that sells one of my favorite bakes. Now, you can't come to Cyprus without checking out Cypriot village bread. It is incredible and very, very different. I discovered this rustic bread when I lived here, and apparently each village has its own ancient recipe. There it is. Quite a solid loaf, but wait till you see this structure. Very different to conventional bread. It's a bit more cake-like than bread-like. You can smell a little bit of the sourdough in there heavy crust, stone-baked. See how thick that is? It's got a lovely chew to it. The reason why this one's special is made by a lady just around the corner, but they also grow the grain, they get the grain milled, so it's all about providence. Cypriot village bread made in a very small area. And so I want to meet the family behind the bread. Just round the corner, Savas and his mother have their own fields, oven and shop. Everything is right on the doorstep, including the mill, which is run by another family in the village. This family has been doing it for the last 300 years. It goes back generations. Give us Andreas and his wife. <laughs> yes, yes. 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 Uh, <laughs> and this is their house, their home and their mill. Absolutely, and their, their museum. <laughs> It's like stepping back 300 years. But all the machines are there, all the kits there. The grain will be stone ground in a machine which has been milling flour for 60 years. The speed of the grain hitting the stones inside determines how fine the flour is. Now there's two types of flour really. The stone ground and non-stone ground. A lot of the modern wheat now is used steel to actually mill the flour. Stone ground creates a very different flour. It heats it up. Now, this flour is warm to touch, and that warmth is almost gives it a caramel flavor. So when you see a stone ground wholemeal, that tends to have more flavor than a conventional wholemeal. This is as rustic as it gets. And how much? Uh, you charge four euros for it. Four euros. Four yeah. euros, that's, that's a bargain. You want Andrea to have man? You want? Now, Savas has taken me to his house where, no surprise, his mum is in charge. She's been baking bread in the same oven since she was a child. Marula and the family make 50 loaves of authentic village bread a day, which they sell in their own shop. Your recipe is farina, Me. maya, uh, sidareno, prosi salt. prosimi. She's located the local flour, the yellow flour that goes in there. And sometimes you use a. Uh, Fuscari, which is the brand on the outside as well. Again, that gives it a flavor and color. But then you have a little bit of yeast in there and then sourdough to rise these to give it the flavor. 
This particular style of bread actually started in Egypt around 2,500 BC. So it's now 4,500 years old. And we're talking about Egypt, which is 100, 100 miles from here, nautical miles straight across. You can see where the movement of bread making has come. Always put your big loaves in, which are going to be in longer, right at the back, and then start building your little ones to the front. That's the only key with an oven like this. Can I try? Yes, for you. Yes. <laughs> you see the halloumi and the mint, you can smell the mint. Bravo, eh? That is very, very good. <laughs> You have a little tang of sour, really crispy, beautiful sesame seeds, then the halloumi and the mint together. And the whole thing is delicious. Coming here from England in my late 20s and discovering rustic bread like this blew my mind and changed my perception of baking forever. This is how we made bread four and a half thousand years ago. Absolutely nothing has changed the technique, even the milling process. This is bread making in its purest form. Back in the capital, it's nightfall. And one thing I've noticed about Nicosia, it's now a 24-hour city. The baking culture has evolved to keep the locals fed every hour of the day. And there's one bread that's a staple for every Cypriot, pitta. Athena's kindly let me back in her kitchen. Hello, Hello. Athena. Hello. For a spot of late night okay. baking. No decent meal in Cyprus is worth its salt unless you've got one of these fellas, and you'll find them everywhere. These are the pita breads. Now, this one is quite thick. This is used for sulagi, my favorite snack. Cut it open, fill it with chicken or pork. These things are delicious. The weird thing is, though, no Cypriot makes their own pitta. They all buy it in for one of the handful of pitta factories on the island. This bakery produces a whopping 10,000 pittas a day, and it's double that on a Saturday. But there's no reason why you can't make one yourself at home. It's so easy. All you need is a standard white dough. Rest it, leave it for about two, three hours. It'll grow and then pff, deflate. Smells quite beery, but that's perfect for a pitta. Get your piece of dough, flour, or farina, as they call it here. So you coat your dough in the flour and then just roll it out nice and thin, as if you're making a pizza base. Try and keep the basic shape, so like an oval. In the oven, I have a tray, and I put that tray in about half an hour ago. Set your oven as high as possible. Open up the door, a little bit of flour in there, get your bit of dough, drop it on there. And what happens in the oven is, gravity holds the base and then the top half pulls away. The yeast has been forced to grow, which creates steam inside a pocket and it grows, 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 and it'll look like a, a rugby ball. When it's at the rugby ball height, that's when you want to bring it out. There you have it. It's got a slight colour on the top and it's dry. You hear that? It's dry. Just the smell of pita bread gets me thinking of one thing. Sulagi. At home, kebabs are often seen as a drunken mistake. Here, Cypriots will eat them at least twice a week. For me, it's more like once a day. Now, sulagi is basically pita bread with pork inside it, with lettuce, tomatoes, a little bit of onion. It's absolutely delicious, and the pita bread is to die for. Now, this is one of the best places in Nicosia. Honestly, I've been waiting for this all day. I skipped breakfast, I had a little bit of lunch, and I can smell the pork now. This place is buzzing with orders flying in and out. What I love about Sulagi is the combinations of the simple, fresh local ingredients and, of course, the best pita bread. How long have we got left? Five minutes? I can't wait five minutes. The smell is just killing me. It's believed that the Amorites or the Bedouins could be the inventors of the pita. 
and both the farming and the desert communities created the pitta to carry food in. Actually, not much has changed, really. You unveil this magic. The whole thing is about the pitta. It's still soft, a little bit crispy on the outside. Inside, you see all the cabbage inside there. There's no polite way of eating it. It's a massive sandwich. And it's good for you. It just takes me back, you know? I always fancy something sweet after Sulagi. And down the road, there's just the thing. When did you start making this? My family started since 1965. Mrs. Kariaki and her husband work from 3 in the afternoon to 10.30 at night, making doughnuts like balls called lucamadas, millions of them. Let me come round. Hang on, let me come round. And what are the ingredients? Farina? Only farina and water. You must put some in secret inside it. Later, when the TV ends, okay. I show you how to make it. Ah, your little secret. Oh, your little minx. You are the only. <laughs> OK. OK. Mrs. Kariaki's family has been making lucamadas for generations, so it's no wonder she's working at such a pace. I'm just looking at the speed. The speed? The speed that you're doing that at, it's just yes. ridiculously quick. Is this your husband? Yes, my yeah. husband is still training after 30 years. <laughs> still training. Another strong woman in charge. There's not much hope for me. I've made thousands of donuts, but not but quite like this. I know this is all going to go pear shaped and she's going to shout at me. Oh, that's tight. OK, it's enough. It's good. I'm always up for learning a new technique, but this could get messy. So you bring it here and you push it. Take the pastry with two fingers and push it. One, oh, sorry, two, OK, three. so it's just a two. It's easy, it's easy. Oh, yeah. You make so difficult things. <laughs> push. I can't. OK, a little bit come out. There must be an easy way than that. Had it now. It won't come through, then. Oh, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it's trying to master it. For the first time. I reckon another day and I'll be up to speed. So these are your fresh ones here, and these have got the syrup on. They have syrup. Can I try one? Yes. Once fried, the lucamadas are covered in rose water syrup and cinnamon. Honestly? These taste amazing. It's a bit like a fritter, it's a bit like a donut. It's just juicy. That's the best fun I've ever had of being absolutely terrible at doing something. <laughs> Come on, you carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Luca Madis actually looks simple enough, and I've made loads of donuts, but that is just ridiculously difficult. <laughs> Coming up. It's time to leave Nicosia and head back to my old hometown of Paphos, as my friends there have organised a reunion party just for me. It's bad. It takes me back. It's really quite weird. And they've asked me to make a bread I was famous for. Thank you very much for coming, guys. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm back in Cyprus, where I once lived showing you the traditional bakes and flavours that are close to my heart. I love the place, and it feels a lot like coming home for me. It's a very special place for me. I moved from the Wirral in the 90s to live and work here. My mum said to me, which was hilarious, she goes, do you know what, son? I'll give you six months, because she didn't want me to go. Nearly six years later, <laughs> I was still here. This is my old stomping ground. Paphos is totally different from the capital, Nicosia. This is where the tourists flock to soak up the sun and where I spent a lot of my time. I come back sometimes twice a year, back to Cyprus, and I always come to Paphos to have a look and see what's changed. They don't really build up, they build out, but the old town still remains the same. There's one place in Paphos that hasn't changed for years and holds great memories for me. It's the local church. This is a world UNESCO site. It's ancient. You have mosaics here. This is one of the oldest Christian churches in the world. But besides that, it's actually where I got married. Alex and I met here when she was a scuba diving instructor. Had a good party afterwards, I'll tell you that much. And the rest, as they say, is history.
to commemorate my return to Cyprus, my friends at the Annabelle Hotel, where I used to work, are throwing a reunion party for me. They've asked me to bake a bread that I was once famous for. I can't wait to get back in the kitchen. I used, to, I used to come here at night when I was really hungry just to see what was left after service. Yeah, come here. Look at, take it. Yeah, look at that. I'll, I'll only open it quickly. See all those little puddings and everything in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This has changed slightly. This used to be all open plan. This is where I worked. Doros. How you doing, mate? You all right? Doros is the hotel's head baker, but I trained him. He knew Cypriot baking, but European style, he had to pick up. These are nice. They're lovely, them. You show me for them. Yeah. One strand plat. Yeah, it's good. It's impossible for me to be in this kitchen without doing some baking myself. Right. Ready for action. It's weird wearing whites and being in the Annabelle kitchen. But I've got something to show you. It's amazing. This, I wrote a couple of recipes in for my baker here years ago. Look at this. September 1997. It's bizarre looking at it. It's all here. Wow. Out on the terrace, friends have gathered for the reunion dinner. They've asked me to bake an olive bread I created back in 1997, which they say they still serve at the hotel today. And just like old times, Doris is helping me out. Now, I've decided to keep it very much Cypriot, very traditional bread as well, actually. I'm going to make an olive, onion and coriander bread. It's uh, the old time, huh? Like the old times, yeah, proper village stuff. OK. In the bowl, I've got strong white flour, into which I'm going to add some salt to one side, some fast-action yeast to the other. We always used this, didn't we, fast-action Yeah, because uh, the fresh one is not uh, able to stay for a yeah. long. It's so hot in here, it'll literally just last about five minutes, and it goes off. Next, add olive oil and water. Begin to mix this around. More, thank you. So we end up with a piece of dough like that, which I'm just basically just bringing together very, very loosely. And I'm just going to pop that on the bench, drizzle olive oil on the bench, then start working the dough. You're just building up the gluten in it. I mean, to be honest, when we were here, we never used to do this, did we? It was all done by machine. Yeah. A lot of bakers teach people how to do it like this, but really? Nah. You don't do 15 kilos of flour by hand. I'm going to pop this back in a bowl. Now, I'm going to add the black olives, put them straight in. The next thing you add is onion. In goes chopped coriander and then mix together. Now, what I'm going to do now is take this out. There should be a clean bowl around somewhere. Thank you very much, Doris. Well done, Paul. Put your dough into the bowl and then leave it alone. You need to leave that to rise for a good hour, hour and a half. The longer time it proves, more flavour of bread we'll have in it. Thank you very much. There you have it. A wobbly jelly that's been resting for two hours. Now you need a scraper. It's a present from you, Paul. That's my old scraper. Yeah, it's yours. Now it's mine. OK, I have my scraper. We're going to get a little dusting of flour on there. Divide this dough into seven pieces. OK, you get your dough. Flatten it down, and then we're going to roll each piece out. The best way to do it is start in the middle and then just gently open it up. And then we start to line them all up. Six, seven. If you get some flour on there and you divide it up, so you put three one side and four the other. But you always start with the most number. Outside, in. Outside in, outside in, and you do this all the way down. So then you open it up again and you start again. Four going in. One, two. And there you have a beautiful plat running all the way down. Now, let the bread prove for one to two hours before baking for 35 minutes. This is a proper tear and share loaf. That is how the bread should be. Nice and golden brown, and it will taste absolutely divine. Cheers, Doros. 
<laughs> the best way to end my time in Cyprus is with my old friends, and my bread is the perfect table centerpiece. Oh, hello, guys. Oh, right. There is your bread. I hope you enjoy it, guys. Tuck in. If you want to tear the bread and pass it around, it's entirely up to you. Honestly, if you don't like olives, put it in bread and you'll enjoy it. The thing is, for me, when I first came to Cyprus, and I haven't said this to anybody yet, I didn't like olives. <laughs> but actually, now I like it. And bread, it works. Thank you very much for coming, guys. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rediscovering Cyprus has been a pure joy for me. I think the Cypriot people always make me happy. <laughs> what they produce is unique to this island, and I think it should be celebrated. If you're into baking and you're traveling to Cyprus, check out these old bakeries. You may not understand the letters. I didn't when I first came here. But go in there, they're friendly, and try them. I promise you, you will love it.